What is going on all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and here we are with our monthly look of how Sword and Shield products have performed over the last month. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at the top 20 singles cards from all sets from the Sword and Shield era that have booster boxes, and we're going to be looking at the booster box prices as well. Now, there's a lot of awesome content creators out there who do a fantastic job of talking about, you know, individual groups of cards or singles cards or, or how those prices have moved month over month, whether it's up or down. But I wanted to start this series because I really think it's important for us to be able to keep our finger on the pulse of the more macro level movements of the market, right? Like I'm a long-term buy and hold collector. Like I want to make sure that the hobby is strong and understanding just these eras as a whole and how they're performing is really important to me because listen, the market, it's going to rotate. Things are going to come in and out of favor. And for me, I'm always trying to find awesome products that are rotating out of favor because to me, that is a great opportunity to buy, right? Like rarely is buying at an all-time high a recipe for success. Now, there can be exceptions, right? Evolving Skies booster boxes, I think, you know, those are near an all-time high, and I still think that those are great products to pick up for long-term. But when we're talking about the singles cards specifically, and when we're looking at some of these uh, underappreciated Sword and Shield booster boxes, I think that we're going to find tons of opportunity, and that's why I love doing this video so much. Now... You see that in the top 20 cards, you'll see from September to October, the total value of all the top 20 cards in these Sword and Shield sets was down 6% month over month. And then October to November, it was down 4%, right? So it's starting to kind of back off a little bit. Then from November to December, it was actually up. The total value of those top 20 cards from November to December actually went up. It went up $59, up 1%. And a lot of us said, hey, listen, before we start celebrating, this could be driven because it's Christmas time and people are buying a lot of presents during the holidays. So maybe we just saw this lift because there's an increase uh, in buying pressure right now what we saw from December to January is look at that. It's only down 1%. Now, I don't believe in participation trophies. A loss is a loss. But for me, coming from December to January, only being down $52 out of this huge swath of cards, uh, I think that is actually a win. Now, what will happen from January to February? We will have to wait and see. But I certainly think Sword and Shield is a great example of cards that got really, really hot there for a while. A lot of these alt arts, you know, the Umbreon was going for like 650 bucks. They had a couple of them, you know, the Giratina, the, the Gengar, you know, all of those were right in the $300 range, like really, really high prices for these. Uh, but now they're starting to come back down to earth and it'll be interesting to see how they perform in the long run. Now, the other thing that's really cool here is these sword and shield booster boxes, right? These, I think this is just a land, it's a land of gold mines, if you ask me. I think there are some awesome booster boxes right now uh, that are undervalued and that I think in the next three, five, ten years are just going to absolutely crush it in terms of uh, price appreciation. So you'll see that, yeah, they've been coming down from September to October, they were down 2%, and then from October to November, down 2%. November to Dan December was pretty much flat, and then December to January, we saw a big jump over the last month, right? The booster box prices are almost right to where they were in September, they're up 5%. Uh, and as we continue to get into the meat and potatoes of this video, it's going to be really cool to show you some of these uh, different individual sets and where the cards are performing and the booster boxes. And there's a bunch of surprises in here and there's some really, really cool learnings. And honestly, that is why I do this. There's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, I have to collect all of this data. I have to keep it in the spreadsheets. I have to format all the Excel uh, in order to get this into you into a di digestible form. I'm happy to do it. I love it. I learn. It helps me level up as a collector. Uh, but if you enjoy this kind of thing, hey, listen, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, questions or comments drop them down below. Those three small things go a long way in helping my channel out. Let's me know you appreciate the work that I do put in here. So without further ado, let's get into the first two sets. So I always show two sets per slide. Now, Lost Origin, I love Lost Origin. We all love Lost Origin, right? The singles prices have been declining, but it has been declining at a reduced rate, right? We talked about how we saw that in the top 20 singles cards, right? For the Sword and Shield era, we talked about it was down 6%, it was down 4%, then it was plus 1%, then it was negative 1%, right? So yes, it was still declining, but it was declining at a slower rate. Same thing for Lost Origin, okay? And when we see this happen with these singles cards, a lot of time the set will pop green. The next month, we will start to see some more green on here and it will actually be positive in the top 20. Again, we've been doing this for five months now, so we're starting to get to understand these trends. The other thing I really like about the Lost Origin is that Giratina's got a little bit of support there, right? It's up to $240. It's up 2% month over month, so that is really, really cool. Now, I will say this. Listen, there's a lot of Lost Origin to be open out there, right? Like, we just had the Iono Premium Tournament uh, Melt Crate bar box that just came out, uh, and it's got all of these Scarlet and Violet packs in there, and it's got a random Lost Origin pack in it, too. So, that tells me Pokemon Company was pr probably looking around the warehouse and said, hey, we got to get rid of some of these Lost Origin packs. Let's do this awesome box and throw them in there. So 
I think there's lots of time. I think these singles will continue to be under some pressure for some time, uh, but it is exciting to see it showing some strength there. Now, the other thing that's exciting to me is the Lugia has again shown a very, very small gain. It is positive, not enough to register as 1%, but it is up and it is two months in a row for that card. And I think that is really, really cool. Like Silver Tempest is a great set. It was obviously the last, you know, regular set that was released in Sword and Shield. So it's been under a ton of pressure from the Pokemon Pop and Flop. You see still a lot of red on that, but I always get excited when the chase card starts to show some strength. And the other thing that's really, really cool about Lost Origin is the booster boxes is in the $120 range right now. Like I know for a fact, I just bought one for my kid. Uh, and the fact that that's there and the fact that the uh, rate of decline for the top 20 cards has slowed down a little bit. We talk about there in the very, very bottom of this, you see that average versus booster box price in the yellow box at the very bottom. Simply a ratio of the booster box price versus the average price of the top 20 cards. Up until this point, this channel's been around for a year. It's a pretty good indication uh, of opportunity for growth in the future. And Lost Origin now moves into the top three. It's never been in the top three before. So the card price is right. The booster box price is right. Uh, and so that average versus booster box price is starting to come in line, which is really exciting to see and really exciting to talk about. Now, the next sets we're going to talk about right here, Astral Radiance and Brilliant Stars. Talking about really, really exciting. We haven't seen this before. So this is back. Back-to-back -back months where both of these saw the top 20 cards be positive. So last month, Astral Radiance, Brilliant Stars, the top 20 singles cards were up month over month. And this month, again, Astral Radiance is up 1%. Brilliant Stars is up 2%. The other thing that's incredibly exciting to me, again, I love to see strength at the top of these lists, is look at the top five for both of these sets. Incredibly strong there. And again, last month we saw a big pop in those two Charizards from Brilliant Stars. And the question in my mind was, hey, listen, are people just buying this for the holidays like we talked about earlier? Obviously, Charizard's crazy, crazy popular, so that would have made all the sense in the world to me. And while the, the growth isn't as big as before, you still see a 5% growth in that alt art at the very top and then 1% for that rainbow card. So really, really, really exciting to see the continued strength in Brilliant Stars. Now, Astral Radiance is a set that, you know, when I think about the top five, top six sets uh, in Sword and Shield, Astral Radiance just doesn't make the cut for me. I know it does for a lot of people. I know it's got a lot of upside to it, but Sword and Shield has some epic sets, so it's really hard, you know, when you start getting into the top four, top five. I just don't know if that Machamp from the Astral Radiance is going to be enough to give this set like that huge value in the long run, but it could be a op good opportunity to get in and buy a booster box if you think that it is, because listen, buy it now is on eBay. I looked it up. They're going for about 135 bucks, but if you're willing to hunt and peck and do some work, and you can pick them up in the $120 range if you're willing to do, you know, some, some auctions. So that could be a really attractive entry point for Astral Radiance. And again, just I'm blown away with the fact that both of these are up month over month and the strength at the top in the top five cards for both of these. I think that bodes very well for them in the long run. Now, Next one right here, Fusion Strike. Talk about set that had a lot last month and gave it all back, right? You know I am a huge Fusion Strike fan. I'm a huge Gengar fan. Uh, and what happened was last month, Fusion Strike was up 4% month over month. And guess what? This month, it gives all of those gains back and it is down 4% month over month. Now, what is still exciting to me was last month, we saw that the Gengar, the big chase card, right, from Fusion Strike, it was up 10% month over month. And I was concerned that this month, we were going to see it give some of those gains back. Not at all. It's still up a little bit. Again, not enough to register that full 1%, uh, but it is up month over month. So the Gengar gained 10% last month and it was able to hold on to it right now, which I absolutely love. Now, Evolving Skies is an absolute monster. Evolving Skies has just done really, really well on this for a long time. Again, I love seeing the Moonbreon there at the very top. I love seeing the strength. Really, when you look at the top 10 cards right there, only three of them are down month over month. And I think that's what's so exciting about Evolving Skies is just the big chase cards in there are so many, so popular, so exciting. The Pokemon are so awesome. Evolving Skies is just a beast of a set. Now, Again, I was looking on eBay to figure this out. You know, you can buy it now from a lot of reputable sellers if you're looking to pick up a booster box of this in the $450 range. I did see some legit auctions that ended much, much below that in the $400 range. I saw a couple buy it nows from some highly reputable sellers that ended in the 410, 415 range. So you might not have to spend all $450 on it. I'm actually seeing this happen. But I do think that if you're out there and you just want to pick it up quick, you can snag this for $450. Bucks. Now, we talked about that average to booster box price ratio, right? Like Evolving Skies is number two and Fusion Strike is number four. So even though Fusion Strike gave back some of its gains month over month, I think all of us believe in Fusion Strike in the long run and the math certainly does support Fusion Strike, you know, being a pretty solid set uh, here for the foreseeable future. Now, the next ones we're talking about, Chilling Rain and Battle Styles. Listen, Chilling Rain, we have been standing at the very top of the mountain screaming for the longest time 
Chilling rain is, is about to break out and we don't have a crystal ball. We never know what's going to happen, but the fundamentals sure were pointing in a very positive direction for chilling rain. It has been out of stock on the Pokemon Center for a while now. And again, the whole world doesn't have access to it, but that's always a good indication for me that when something flips to sold out on the Pokemon Center, that is when a booster box can really start to run. So we're seeing those booster boxes up in the $160 range right now. The other thing is again, talking about that average to booster box price, four months in a row, chilling rain has had the highest one, not by a little bit, but by a mile. And that has just been another indicator that, hey, back when it was in stock in the Pokemon Center, back when you could have picked this up for $140 a booster box, like it just gave me all kinds of confidence. Now, is the Blaziken big enough to carry this set into the future? Is that card, you know, a big dog? Is that one going to be a top 10 card in the whole Sword and Shield era? I think that is yet to be determined. I love some of these other sets that have the Gengar and the Giratina, you know, and the Moonbreon there at the very top. I don't think there's any doubt about where they'll land up. I love the Blaziken, but the question is, do enough people love it? Is it going to become one of those $200 cards? We shall see. And then... Battle Styles right there. Okay, so last month, Battle Styles was up from a uh, top 20 card perspective, 1%. This month, it is actually down 3%. But if you look at where the losses came from, look at those top five cards right there. You have a little bit of strength in number two and number five, but negative 7% on that Tyranitar alt art. Like that really, really hurts. When you only have one card in the $100 range and it loses 7%, you got to get a whole lot of help further down in the list in order to make up for that. And then the number three card was down 15%. The number four card was down 7%. There was just too much of a drop at the top for this to have any sense uh, of holding on for the long run. So Brilliant Stars got a little bit of a kick in the shin this month, uh, but overall I think Battle, I'm sorry, I said Brilliant Stars, I meant Battle Styles, but overall I think Battle Styles is going to be fine in the long run. Again, not a set that's going to make you a millionaire over the next couple years, but I do think that it's a quality set with some alt arts in it, uh, and certainly in the $110, $115 range for a booster bar box, it is really hard to ignore. Now, the next ones we're talking about right here, Vivid Voltage and Darkness Ablaze. Darkness of Blaze was up 13% last month, month over month. It was insane. We have never seen a top 20 group ever have that big of a gain overall. We've seen singles cards have be up 13%, 15%, 20%, whatever, but we've never seen the collective group of all of them up 13% uh, month over month. So in the back of my mind, when I was pulling this data, I'm like, man, Darkness of Blaze is just, it's going to fall from the rafters, right? There's no way it can hold on to it. It's only down 1% month over month. So for me, that is absolutely amazing. After a huge, huge gainer month, uh, it really held on to a lot of it. But then the other thing I do want to call out is there's a lot of softness in the top five for both of these sets. You look at Vivid Voltage, you look at Darkness Ablaze, like the Charizard and Darkness Ablaze obviously can't hold its water. Uh, it's been having a really, really tough time here as of late. So those are the things that gets me a little bit of concern, but I do love keeping an eye on that Pikachu. And for me, that $100 mark on that Pikachu, if it can keep above that $100 mark, that I don't know for whatever reason, that's just kind of like the line in the sand I have in my head. I want to make sure it's over $100. Now, Another exercise that I did when I was pulling this together is, you know, I know Vivid Voltage was printed in the ground, and obviously this Pikachu, you know, was the big chase card from Vivid Voltage. So I thought, I'm going to go on PSA and see how many PSA 10s uh, of these Pikachu exist, because I thought there was going to be 13, 14, maybe 20,000 of them out there, just knowing that everybody says, oh, Vivid Voltage was printed into the ground, yada, yada, yada. Well, there's only 6.7 thousand, like 6,700 PSA 10s of this chase Pikachu from Vivid Voltage out there, which is interesting. You think about the Umbreon, right? Um, the big Moonbreon from Evolving Skies, there's almost 10,000 of them in PSA 10. Now, listen, obviously price matters, collectability matters, more people, I mean, the, 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 you know, the Moonbreon is the freaking grail from the Sword and Shield era. So I am not surprised that there are more of them graded in PSA 10 uh, than of the Vivid Voltage Pikachu. Like, it just makes all the sense in the world. But I did find it interesting uh, that it's really 3,000 uh, less PSA 10s of this uh, Vivid Voltage Pikachu than there is of that Umbreon right there. Because when that Pikachu came out, those PSA 10s were selling for a ridiculous amount of money. So very interesting to look at that. And I always love doing some comparisons just because it makes it fun. It helps, it relates things a little bit more. Now, finishing up with Rebel Clash and Sword and Shield. Now, last month, all of the Rebel Clash top 20s were down. We have never seen that before, right? We talked about Darkness Ablaze. We saw a huge gain. We've never seen that before. Last month, every single top 20 card in Rebel Clash was down, and we had never seen that before either. But what we have seen is these sets that have these crazy red months, where almost all of them are down, or the whole set is down 6% month over month. We have almost always, I don't speak in definitives, but we've almost always uh, seen it snap back, and that's what we saw with Rebel 
double clash, right? Like we see a little bit of strength at the top, you know, uh, top card up there is up 5%, then negative two, then negative two, but then you start to see some strength down there, plus six, plus five, plus three, plus two. So Rebel Clash is uh, making a little bit of a comeback. And then my Marnie from Sword and Shield continues to slide. I love that card. I got one of them right above me over here in a PSA 10. I absolutely love it. And remember, we've talked about trends that we've noticed when we do this month over month. So in quotes down below, uh, I have Sword and Shield still in the red, but from negative 11 to negative nine to negative 1%. That was the exact quote that I had on this exact slide last month. And then I said gains to come. Now, it's positive, not positive enough for it to register as plus 1%. So it's not up a ton, but it is up. And it's going to be very interesting to see if when we see these patterns of where, you know, the losses continue to slow a little bit, uh, do we start to see these sets gain some strength? And could it give us some indicators in the future of where cards might actually be able to pop up a little bit? So listen, I think this is a ton of fun. I think this is really cool information. I love the fact that a lot of people focus on individual cards that are going up and down. But for me, for us, I think when we're trying to play chess, when everybody else is playing checkers, this is a great tool in our tool belt because you can see what individual cards are doing and I think this is really cool information. So as I said in the beginning, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and hey, I appreciate you more than I can say. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an epic one. Thanks everybody. Bye.